Do you enjoy our YouTube content? Do you wish there was more? Well, now there is. Patreon.com slash Powercast Network. There you will find, just starting at $5 a month, more access to podcasts, to shows, to other saves. Check it out today, everybody. That's patreon.com slash Powercast Network. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to this week's edition of This Day in Wrestling History. Today is August 16th, 2022, and we are going back, way back, to August 16th, 1984. Let's take a look at Mid-South Wrestling. They ran a show in Paradis, Louisiana. I think I pronounced that right. If I haven't, folks, please let me know. Uh, Looks like this was a spot show. It's the only show they ran that night. And the Midnight Express, which of course at this point was Dennis Condry and Bobby Eaton, along with Jim Cornette, defeated Norvell Austin and Coco Ware. So that was for Mid-South Wrestling and Paradis, Louisiana. Uh, Jim Crockett Promotions ran two shows that evening on August 16th, 1984. Uh, The first show that they ran was the Exhibition Center in Sumter, South Carolina. And on that show, Ivan Koloff and Don Kernodal defeated Mark Youngblood and the Renegade. Obviously, this is not the Renegade from 11 and 12 years later. This is a, another Renegade, and I'm not exactly sure who that was. Uh, Nick, uh, going along in the card here, Nikita Koloff defeated Johnny Weaver. Adrian Street defeated Jeff Sword. Tom Shaft! Defeated Kurt Von Hess. That is one heck of a name, Tom Shaft. I'm not sure who that is. And last but not least, Paul Kelly defeated Mike Golden. And Paul Kelly, of course, was one half of the Kelly Brothers tag team. He unfortunately would get killed in a car accident, uh, I think in 1985 or 1986. It may have even been as late as 1987. That's the same car accident that killed uh, Adrian. Um, Oh, he was with uh, the WWF, did the Bizarro gimmick. He was also part of the East-West Connection along with Jesse Ventura. Adrian Adonis, that's who I'm thinking of. Okay, uh, moving right along to the second show that Jim Crockett Promotions had that day. They ran in the Scope in Norfolk, Virginia, and Wahoo McDaniel and Tully Blanchard, remember this is a Wahoo McDaniel heel run here, they defeated Ric Flair and Ricky Steamboat, and of course, Ric Flair had a babyface run going here. Bret Hart defeated Doug Vines. That's right, Bret Hart traveled down to the Mid-Atlantic Territory and did some time with Jim Crockett Promotions. Denny Brown defeated Mike Fever. Mike Fever, of course, was a longtime enhancement talent. James J. Dillon defeated Keith Larson. Keith Larson was also known as Rocky Kernodal. He was the brother of Don Kernodal. Uh, they tried to give him a little bit of a push, and then he ended up doing enhancement talent the rest of his time in the uh, Mid-Atlantic Territory. Brian Adias defeated Gary Royal. Brian Adias, of course, was from the uh, World Class Territory, and he was doing some stints up here in Jim Crack Promotions. Remember, a lot of the territories, uh, of course, in 1984, the World Class was still a member of the NWA, so it makes sense that he was hitting the other NWA territories. So, Ange- uh, moving right along, Angelo Mosca defeated Assassin Number 3, and based on my research, Assassin Number 3 here in August of 1984 should be Randy Colley. And lastly on this card, Rufus R. Jones defeated Assassin Number 1, which of course was Jody Hamilton. And uh, Tom Ernesto had retired a few years before this, and Jody Hamilton kept the Assassin Tag Team going on and took on Randy Colley as a partner, and later on he would take on a couple other partners, and we could probably spend an hour talking about the Assassins alone. So, folks, there are uh, I did some other research. The WWF was actually off that night. They did not run a show on August 16th, 1984. I know it's hard to believe. So, uh... That's the end of my research here for August 16th. 
1984. Thanks for tuning in, everybody, and we'll see you next time on This Day in Wrestling History.